Hello and welcome back to our higher mathematics topic on functions in graphs. Today we're going to be looking at inverse functions and how to work out the inverse function and then we'll be wrapping up by talking about the graph of an inverse function. So in the last video we talked about a type of function called a composite function and today we're talking about another type of function called an inverse function which as you can guess by the name because we're talking about an inverse it's going to have something to do with the opposite of the function. So the idea of an inverse function is simply to reverse the effect of the original function so it's basically the opposite of the function. And we should already really be familiar with this idea. For example, if we double a number, we can reverse that by halving the number. So the same sort of applies when we're talking about functions. And we denote an inverse function of a function, let's say a function is called f, we denote the inverse function as f to the power of minus one. And this is read as f inverse. So we usually call this f inverse. So this is our little bit of notation before we get into a formal definition of inverses. So to give a formal definition, we'll just simply say that the inverse function of f denoted f to the power of minus 1 is the opposite function we'll put that in quotations of f and a little fact to know about inverse functions and this is a very important fact and it sort of continues on from where we were talking about composite functions we say that the functions f and g are said to be inverses if, and this is very important here, this is if the composite function f of g of x is equal to g of f of x, which simply equals x. So to quickly visualize this, what we mean by this is that when a number is worked through a function, so let's take our input value here x, when it's worked through a function to give us a new value f of x, we do the inverse f of minus 1 of f of x and this will put us back to where we started by doing the inverse of the function to get us back to the value we first inputted. So for example if we have a function let's say f of x and let's say it's the equation 4x subtract 1 and we would say that the inverse function of this is g of x which equals x plus 1 over 4. But how did I work this out? Well we can work out if a function is an inverse of each other by working out the two composite functions. So the composite function f of g of x in this case would equal f of x plus 1 divided by 4 which when we substitute into here is 4 times that x plus 1 over 4 subtract 1 we see here the 4s are going to cancel out like so so we get x plus 1 minus 1 which is simply equal to x and when we do this the other way around when we do g of f of x we see that we're going to be finding the function g of 4 x subtract 1 which is simply 4x subtract 1 plus 1 divided by 4 which the ones are going to 
cancel out. So we get 4x over 4, which simply just equals x. So we can see that the functions are inverses of each other because in each case of doing the composite function, we find that we get x. And as you can see in our definition, the f and g are said to be inverses because the composite function f of g of x and the other composite function g of f of x will give us x in both cases, as we can see. So these two functions here, f and g, are called inverses of each other. Now, in that little example before, I worked out the inverse g of x pretty quickly, didn't I? Well, let me show you how I did that with a little example here, where the example says a function f is defined for all real numbers by f of x equals x cubed plus 1. Now, in this case, we don't have an inverse function. We are just simply asked to find a formula for its inverse. So we want to work out the inverse of this function f of x. And we simply do four steps to work out the inverse function. So for step one, the first step is to replace f of x with y in the formula. So in our case, if we replace f of x with y, we're going to get y equals x cubed plus 1. Step number two is we're doing a bit of changing the subject. Now we learned about this at national five. So if you need to recap of that, quickly go and look back at it. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the subject um, of this formula. So the new formula we've got to y. So in this case here, if we're rearranging um, the um, not to x to y, sorry, we're going to change it to x. That's my bad. So if we're rearranging in terms of x in this case, remember we have to start by taking the 1 over to the other side. So we're going to get that x cubed is equal to y subtract 1. And therefore x is going to equal the cube root of y subtract 1. So we've changed the subject of this formula to x now. Step 3, we are going to interchange x and y. Now this might sound quite confusing, but all we are simply doing is anywhere there's an x, change it to a y, and anywhere there's a y, change it to an x. So this line here will now read as y equals the cube root of x minus 1. And the fourth step we're going to do in this example is replace y with f to the minus 1 of x. So use the notation for an inverse function to obtain the inverse formula. So here we replace y with f to the minus 1 of x, and this side will stay the same. So we'll have the cube root of x minus 1. And this here is the inverse function of the function f of x equals x cubed plus 1. So to go over the steps again, we start by replacing f of x with y. So this is the same as here, except instead of f of x, we've just written y. Then we change the subject of the formula to find x. Now it might not always be x. If our formula, for example, is f of t equals t cubed plus 1, we are simply rearranging it to whatever our function was in terms of. So our function is in terms of x, so we're going to change the subject to find x on its own. Then we're simply going to interchange x and y. So switch them around, we get y equals the cube root of x minus 1. And then the final step is change y to the inverse function symbol.
Now this next thing I'm going to show you, you won't have to do in the exam, but I'm just doing this to help you guys to show you how this function here is the inverse of this function here. So I'm just going to simply show you why it is. Well, if you remember, if we're showing that a function is the inverse of another function, we work out the two composite functions and they should give us x. So if we do f of the other function, which is the inverse function, we are working out f of the cube root of x minus 1, which if we plug into this formula here, we are getting the cube root of x minus 1, all cubed, plus 1. And if we do the cube root of something cubed, they're just going to disappear. So we're going to get x minus 1 plus 1, which equals x. So it's looking good so far. And now we're going to do the opposite here. We're going to do the inverse function, f to the minus 1 of f of x. And we find that we're doing the inverse function of x cubed plus 1, which if we substitute into here, we're going to get the cube root. And our x value in this case is x cubed plus 1 minus 1. Now, inside this little bracket here, we can simplify a few things. So x cubed plus 1 minus 1 is just going to be x cubed. Don't forget our cubed root. Now, because we're doing the cube root of a number cubed, again, they could just cancel out. It's kind of doing the same thing as the square root of let's say x squared is obviously just going to be x except in this case we're talking about the cube root so we're simply going to get x and we can see that these are inverses of each other because in each case we will get x so if you have time at the end of your exam if you have a question like this it's a good idea just to check if these two functions are inverses of each other by doing the composite functions of each of them so let's do another example here. Example 2 says a function g is defined for all real numbers by g of x equals x minus 3 divided by 2. And we are asked to find a formula for its inverse g to the minus 1. Now if you remember our four steps, we'll go over them again, but this time we won't state that we're doing the steps. So our first step is to change g of x to y. So in this case, it's not f, it's g of x, but it's pretty much the same thing. So we say that y is equal to x minus three divided by two. Our second step is to rearrange to find x. So change the subject to get x. Well, if we multiply both sides by two, we get two y is equal to x minus three. Add three to both sides we'll find that x is equal to 2y plus 3. The third step is to change g, uh, change x, sorry, to y and change y to x. So we'll get that y is equal to 2x plus 3. And the final step is simply change y to g to the minus 1. So the inverse of x is going to equal 2x plus 3 and this is our inverse function g to the minus 1 of x is equal to 2x plus 3. Now if you have the time on your own now quickly go and check that these two are inverses by doing the composite functions of them both and you should find that this here will give x when you do it and this here will also give x when you do it. So now that we've talked about what an inverse function is of a function, we're going to look at a little bit of graphs. So we're going to simply talk about the graph of an inverse function. And we're going to start off by saying that if we have the graph of a function, then we can find the graph of its inverse 
And how are we going to do this? Well, we find the graph of its inverse by reflecting in the line y equals x. Now, what is this line y equals x? Well, if you remember, if we have a graph, this is very poorly drawn, y, x, the line y equals x is simply this diagonal line where at all values, whatever the x value is, will give the y value. And it should also extend down here. And so should our graph like this. So to visualize a couple examples of the inverse graph, we can see in this first example here, we have the curve y equals f of x, which is this curve here. And to work out the inverse of y equals f of x, we just reflect it across the line y equals x. So when we reflect it, every point will go straight the way across. And you can see we've just simply reflected it across this line, which will give us y equals the inverse function of f, like so. And similarly with here, we have the function y equals g of x, which gives this line here when drawn as a graph. And if we reflect it across the line y equals x, we get the inverse function y equals g to the minus 1 of x, which looks something like this. So we're simply reflecting them across, not mirroring, but reflecting.